Put it that way in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. We just made a transfer of some liquid helium out of a storage tank into our own experimental equipment. Helium is a remarkable substance. It has two different and easily distinguishable liquid phases, a warmer and a colder one. The warmer phase is called liquid helium-1 and the colder phase liquid helium-2. The two phases are separated by a transition temperature known as the lambda point. When liquid helium is cooled down through the lambda point, a transition from helium-1 to helium-2 is clearly visible. We will show it to you later in this film. The two liquids behave nothing like any other known liquids, although it could be said that helium-1, the warmer phase, approximates the behavior of common liquids. But it is helium-2, the colder phase, which is truly different. Because of this, it is called the superfluid. The temperatures involved when working with liquid helium are quite low. Helium boils at 4.2 degrees Kelvin under conditions of atmospheric pressure, and the lambda point lies at roughly 2.2 degrees. Note that this corresponds to minus 269 and minus 271 degrees centigrade. The properties of liquid helium that I've just been telling you about are characteristic of the heavy isotope of helium, helium-4. The element occurs in the form of two stable isotope, the isotopes. The second and lighter one, helium-3, is very rare. Its abundance is only about one part out of ten million. Pure liquid helium-3 is the subject of intensive study at the present time, but so far, no second superfluid liquid phase has been found to exist for helium-3. The low temperatures at which we'll be working call for well-insulated containers. The doer meets our requirement. The word doer is the scientific name given to a double-walled vessel with the space between the walls evacuated. When these doors are made of glass, the surface of this inner space is usually silvered to cut down heat transfer by radiation. However, our doors will have to be transparent so that we can look at what's going on inside. Now, liquid helium is commonly stored in double doors. The design is quite simple. Just put one inside the other. Like this. In the inner door, we put the liquid helium. And in the space between the inner and outer door, we maintain a supply of liquid air. Here is a double door, exactly like the one we will be using in our demonstration experiments. The inner door is filled with liquid helium. The outer door contains liquid air. The normal boiling temperature of liquid air is about 80 degrees Kelvin. 75 or more degrees hotter than the liquid helium. The purpose of the liquid air is twofold. First, we put the liquid air in the outer door well ahead of putting liquid helium in the inner door. In this way, the inner door is pre-cooled. Secondly, we maintain a supply of liquid air in the outer door because it provides an additional mantle of insulation now that the liquid helium is in the inner door. The boiling of the liquid air attests to the fact that it is absorbing some of the heat which entered the double door. Even with the boiling of the liquid air, the liquid helium is clearly visible. Later, we will use liquid air cooled below its boiling temperature to reduce or eliminate the air bubbles for better visibility. 
Now the liquid air is cooled down and we have eliminated boiling. The smaller bubbles of the boiling liquid helium are clearly visible. The cover over the inner door has a port, at present open. The liquid helium is at atmospheric pressure, so its temperature is 4.2 degrees Kelvin.